All right, so we at least know where he's going. I want some rest. Are we having fun yet? All right, so we talked about this already that Chip England was leaving the San Antonio Spurs, but we did not know where he was going. But now, now we know. All right, we got to talk about this because there's a lot of takes out there, a lot of Spurs fans upset. And obviously, I'm not the happiest about it, but there is a way of kind of viewing this without such a negative lens, okay? It's, it's not that bad. Now, before we talk about that really quickly, um, I told you guys this already. I will be doing shirts pretty soon, so I have the equipment coming. Um, I should have some designs out maybe in the next couple days, actually. So just be on the lookout for that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep you guys updated. You're gonna like it. It's pretty, it's pretty dope, okay? It's, it's pretty awesome. All right, so here we go. Whew. All right, the OKC are hiring Chip England as an assistant coach. England, considering the NBA shot doctor, basically. Spent 17 years with the Spurs, where he considered uh, to have an immense impact on Kawhi Leonard and Tony Parker, among others. Um, and your boy Woj also added that he's actually really great friends with Sam Presti. Um, so they've had a relationship uh, in his days in the Spurs front office. So how do I feel about this? Initially, I was upset, okay, because obviously Chip England been with us for so long. He's had such an impact on other players for us. But then I sat back and I said, which I said this in another video as well, but I was like, it's okay. Like, it, it's all right. The, he's not the only shot doctor in the NBA. He's not the only uh, coach to ever improve players' jump shots. That's just not true. If that's the case, every single player that comes into the league that don't shoot threes or have poor jump shots would be terrible shooters today. And that's not the case. Um, so he's not the only one. There's millions and millions and billions of dollars put into um, these coaches and put into these these players that they have top-notch talent. Now, are we losing talent? Sure. But you have to keep in mind that this is a rebuild. And oftentimes rebuilds require coaches to leave too. So I think the biggest question here is why? And that's where I get irritated with a, a lot of a lot of people. All right, so the why here, obviously we don't really know 120%, but I'm gonna go ahead and make an assumption that Chip England has never had an issue with San Antonio Spurs at all, okay? Over the 17 years he's been here, I'm pretty sure even in the next few days or whenever he actually talks about it, I, I don't know when he'll talk about it, but once he talks about it, he'll say how much love he has for the Spurs and how much they've helped him over the years. I don't think there's any bad blood there. What probably is the case, which happens oftentimes with, with rebuilds, is that it, it's probably just a contractual thing. Um, the Spurs are definitely going, not, not necessarily saying Chip England, we don't want you anymore or anything, but they're definitely going in a direction where maybe Chip just isn't 100% in the plans. Maybe he wants a contract that's longer, I don't know. Or maybe he wants a contract that's a little bit more money. I, I, don't, I don't know about that, but I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that it's just something to do with the contractual uh, agreement and they just came to a conclusion like, uh, okay, you know, if you wanna go with OKC, that's that's totally fine. Chip England's an old man, okay? He's an old man, like like Pop. I think he's like actually 10 years younger than Pop, but he's still an old man, all right? Yeah, old man. So I understand um, whatever that, you know, whatever that reason is. Now, that's not what I wanted to talk about, okay? The reason why I want to talk about this is because a lot of people that are saying that Chip England leaving is the end of the world and the Spurs are going to be bad forever, that's not necessarily true. Like if you look in the history of players, there's been a plethora of players who have changed their jump shots or improved their jump shots without Chip England. You don't necessarily have to have him to improve your jump shot. Plenty of players have done it. If we're looking at Chris Bosh, he's a perfect, perfect example. He's become a very, or he was, a very uh, a deadly three-point shooter, especially for his size. And you, you can even see here, he was not taking three-point shots at all during his career. And it wasn't until he got with the Miami Heat, um, it, after actually a couple seasons after being with Miami Heat, that he started taking more threes and he improved his three-point shooting. So that is possible there. If you look at Jason Kidd, I think that's probably the most prominent example. A lot of people would agree with this. Jason Kidd improved his jump shot tremendously. But even if we want to keep it within like the last decade or couple decades or so, there's Serge Ibaka. Um, I don't have him up, but we have Paul Millsap. He's another player that definitely improved his jump shot over the years. 
Uh, he didn't have Chip England. Uh, Anthony Davis, another prime example. Um, if you don't recall, Anthony Davis in college, he didn't even take threes. Like he was like the Ben Simmons, okay, of college. He he didn't take threes, okay. He didn't take threes at all. Um, but over the years, he's gotten better and he's improved his three point shooting. Now he's not the 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 greatest, okay, necessarily not the greatest, but he has improved his shot nonetheless. Um, he's not someone you just want to necessarily leave open at three. Um, and one of the main examples that I absolutely love bringing up is Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball. <clears throat> If you guys recall, a lot of people were calling his jump shot broken. They say he has a broken jump shot. Well, he didn't have Chip England to improve that jump shot, but nonetheless, we can see here that his three-point shooting improved like crazy. Um, even, even his field goal percentage overall improved like crazy, um, but his three-point percentage improved. Um, he went from a 30, borderline 29% three-point shooter to 23 to 27.5, near 28 to 42% three-point shooter. So all I'm trying to say is it's not the end of the world. Let's relax a little bit. I know that it is a blow that uh, Chip England will no longer be with the Spurs, but hey, it was going to happen eventually, okay? Either it was going to happen, I don't know, in the next five six years when he's done coaching or it was it was going to happen earlier it just is what it is okay he, he's he's an older man it's okay we just got to move on and and we'll find another shooting coach i mean come on it, it, it's okay other players have improved their shots um we, we're, we don't have the i know a lot of people bring up obviously Kawhi leonard and tony parker but i'm sorry these aren't the only two players in nba history that have improved their jump shots over the years that it's just not we'll be okay all right um, but anyways, yeah, I'll give it to you guys later, man. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I know that this is a blow, but it, it's, it's not the end of the world. We'll be all right. All right, until next time, guys. Uh, deuces.